showing the people um, stepping out of the church basements from 12 step meetings, you know, out into the sunlight of the public and proclaiming with new language that they were people in long-term recovery, not violating any of the 12 step traditions, but being able to go public with the message that, that, that there are many of us that are not feeling ashamed of our addiction. We are in fact proud that we have transcended something that was um, life-threatening and demoralizing and shaming and humiliating and, and so damaging uh, to, to turn that around and, and go from being part of the problem to part of the solution. Um, I was electrified. I was ignited by that movie and the language that it, that it offered us. And became even more passionate in my recovery advocacy um, uh, efforts. And so um, as I was transitioning into my, what I thought was going to be my retirement, um, not only from the work that I did with, this, with the state, uh, but also with the work that I was doing with the National Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence, I was reading a, um, I was reading two, two pieces of literature. One was Recovery Rising um, from the author William White, uh, who was just the, the historian of the addiction and the recovery movement. And, and in combination with that, I was also reading the biography of Marty Mann, who's identified sometimes as the First Lady of Alcoholics Anonymous. She went on to found the National Council on Alcoholism, which later, you know, morphed into the National Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence. So, in a combination of reading the, the two of their their writings and their thoughts, it occurred to me um, that that the time is ripe now with what we have with the the uh, access and advent of technology to be able to connect the dots of the recovery movement from individual isolated events that occurred initially through recovery month, you know, in the United States in September, uh, and then it, in more recent years has expanded to Japan, Canada, the UK, Australia, et cetera, um, that we could use technology to uh, connect those dots on an international level all at once. And there's, and that's in combination with the more recent movement of the um, recovery movement embracing all pathways of recovery. Before we just had Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous essentially. Those 12 step meetings splintered off to many other 12 step meetings, but in addition to that, we have Smart Recovery, Celebrate Recovery, Life Ring, Well Variety, White Bison, you know, many other pathways of recovery. Um, and so we know that one size doesn't fit all. And so to be able to embrace all pathways of recovery and to be inclusive of all addictions and, um, you know, all at once uh, globally, uh, the, 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 uh, the formula was there and the opportunity seemed to be you know, if not when, now, and if not me, who, you know, and so I just, you know, grabbed the ball by the horns and, and sort of ran with it. Uh, I, I consulted with uh, William White, for instance, and Greg Williams of the Anonymous people were a couple of the first people that I reached out to, to say, hey, I've got this idea, what do you think? They both love the idea, and they encouraged me to, uh, to, to move it forward. My idea, Jim, was that um, I can offer this to some of the recovery, um, you know, the larger uh, recovery groups and, and um, see how they could move that forward. And as it turned out, um, facing addiction with Greg Williams and his group, which is at the time was the largest national uh, recovery group, they folded. The National Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence, almost simultaneously, they went under as well. And so there was that gap. And so I'm sort of left holding the bag and, okay, well, 
what can I do to move it forward? And, and so with encouragement and support, formed a steering committee uh, of a number of the um, nationally as well as internationally known uh, recovery advocates. The goals are to primarily to shift the focus from the ravages of addiction. Everybody knows how awful it is and how devastating it is individually to families and to communities to shift the focus from the negative aspects of addiction over to the positive. That there are people that can and do successfully transform their lives and their families and their communities and it's happening all across the globe. So offering a beacon of hope, you know, that Father Martin, who was one of the pioneers of the, uh, of the early recovery days, and I had the, the, the wonderful fortune of getting to know him in my early recovery also. He lived in the same area. He was my first recovery hero. But he used to talk about the concept of getting weller than well. And I believe that through recovery, we can get weller than well, not just to where we were, or recapture where we were before we got sick, but go well beyond, well beyond that. And through that, we have, through our experience, strength, and hope of those of us that have found, found this new way of living, we have something, we have a diamond to offer the world in terms of how to transform the world.